Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about a little bit of welfare economics, specifically in this video, what is consumer surplus? So without wasting any of your time, let's get into it. So in a general sense, economic welfare refers to the benefits that consumers or producers receive by participating in the market, so buying and selling goods. Consumer surplus specifically is the benefit that customers receive when they pay a price less than what they were willing to pay. So let's see what that looks like on a supply and demand graph. But in this scenario, I'm just going to draw the demand curve because we're looking at consumers specifically. So let me draw my demand curve right here. And obviously it's downward sloping because of the law of demand and we'll set our point of equilibrium. So if we had drawn a supply curve, let's say it would intersect the demand curve right here. So then this would be my P star or my P at equilibrium. And down here would be my Q star or my Q at equilibrium. So if I had a supply curve, it would run through this point as well. So let me just show you theoretically what I'd be looking at, something like this where it also runs through the point of equilibrium and then where the two lines intersect is my P star and my Q star. However, we're not going to have the supply curve, but if it was here, this is what it would look like. So typically we look at a demand curve and we think, okay, this is how the demand curve makes sense. Here's the price right here, P star. How much do consumers want to buy at this price P star? But looking at consumer surplus, you kind of want to look at the demand curve a little bit differently. And you would look at it as, oh, here's the available quantity. At what price are consumers willing to buy the product? So you can look at P star and say, okay, at P star or at the equilibrium price, this is how much consumers demand. That's the intersection of P star at the demand curve. But when thinking about consumer surplus, you want to kind of flip that and look at quantity instead. So we could say with quantity set at Q star, what price are consumers willing to pay to consume this good? In this sense, the demand curve actually depicts the value that consumers place on a good and it shows the maximum amount they're willing to pay to purchase a given quantity of the good. So if we have Q star here at this quantity available, people are willing to pay a price of P star. Okay, so with this in mind, we're going to talk about something called a consumer's reservation price. And essentially a reservation price is simply the willingness to pay. It's the highest price that consumers are willing to pay for a good. This price indicates how much value they associate with the good. Let's look at an example. Let's say that you want to purchase a family sized bag of Doritos for the low, low price of $5 and you weren't willing to pay a penny more. Well, in that case, we would say that $5 is your reservation price because if the family sized bag of Doritos is more than $5, you simply won't buy it. However, what if the bag of Doritos is actually less than $5? Well, in this scenario, you would receive a consumer surplus. So let's suppose that the Doritos go on sale for $4. So now you can go to your friends and brag about how you ate a whole bag of Doritos the other day, family size. And at the very same time, you saved $1. The demand curve is effectively our price curve in this scenario, and it tells us the highest price and therefore the value that consumers are willing to pay when different quantities of the good are available. Now there's two ways to determine where the consumer surplus is located, where I can find it on this graph. And the two things are as follows. Consumer surplus by definition is the area under the demand curve. So the demand curve is right here. Let me do this in a different color so that we can see it a little bit easier. Let me do this in yellow maybe. So the demand curve is right here. So it's gonna be the area under the demand curve, but also at the very same time, it must be above the selling price. Well, what's the selling price here? Well, it's P star. So it must be above the selling price and below the demand curve. So we end up having this yellow triangle right here. And this, is below the demand curve. The demand curve is right here. It's above the selling price and this would be our consumer surplus. So on a graph, consumer surplus is this triangle below the demand curve above the selling price and it's all based on the value that people place on their goods. 
the more value you place, the higher your reservation price or the higher your willingness to pay. In my example with Doritos, you had a reservation price of $5 per bag and you would not pay more than that. However, every dollar less you pay is surplus. That's extra money in your pocket. You got your good and it was cheaper than you were actually willing to pay for it. I hope that that makes a lot of sense. Now, the mathematics behind calculating consumer surplus is simple and we will make a video in the near near future on how to do just that. So looking at this graph, how to actually calculate what the area of this triangle here, this yellow triangle is. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel and comment what sort of economic topics and or homework questions you would like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next.